brothers and sisters, have you ever woken one day and you feel that uh, it's like I'm not saved? My feelings, the way I feel is like God is far from me. And uh, you get to ask yourself, am I really saved? So today I want to answer this question. What if I don't feel saved? Does it change anything in me? Does it make, uh, does it make God to be far from me? You see, friends, salvation is uh, not a feeling, but is a, is a, is is about trust, is about faith, belief, and um, this is a very common question to many Christians, and uh, many people always doubt their salvation because um, of feelings or maybe the lack of them. You can have some kind of feeling you feel. I'm really close to God this day, or I'm really far from God this day. You see, the Bible has so much to say about salvation, but um, surely there is nothing to say about feeling saved. And uh, salvation is a process by which the sinner is delivered from the wrath to come, or from the wrath that is from God's judgment against sin. Remember, the Bible tells us about this in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 9. The Bible says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So, the essence of why we are being saved it to, is to be saved from the wrath, which is the judgment of God upon sin. So, it's not about a feeling. Even when you check in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, the Bible says, For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, specifically, you have to understand that it was Jesus' death on the cross and subsequent resurrection that achieved our salvation. It was not about a certain feeling. It was not about anything that we did. It was not about our own goods or maybe what we think. It is not about self. You see, your feelings are about self. I feel this today. I feel I'm close to God. I feel I'm far from God. That is your feeling. But the Bible tells us it's about Jesus, not about you. All right? Remember in the book of um, Romans 5.10, the Bible says, For if when we were enemies... We were, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. So much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not by our feelings. We shall be saved by his life. He is the one who reconciled us back to the father while we were still enemies. And when you see Ephesians 1.7, the Bible says, uh, in the book of Ephesians 1.7, the Bible says, for God, eh, ah, sorry, in whom we have redemption through his blood. So how are we redeemed? How are we saved? By his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So we have redemption. Redemption is to be taken away from, to be redeemed from wrath, to be taken away from God's judgment and to be declared holy, righteous, Clean is like as if you have never done anything. We are redeemed through his blood. The blood that Jesus shed on the cross. So once we know this, then we have no fear. It's not about how we feel. It's not about how I think or what I see about myself. You see, our part in the salvation process is that we are saved by faith. And this is the only important thing. First, we must hear the gospel, all right? the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, like the Bible says in Ephesians 1.13, in whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So you must hear first the gospel. Then we must believe. We must fully trust the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, believing can never be faked. You can never fake faith. There are some people who say, what if I believe and then all of a sudden I decide to go away? You never believed because you can never fake faith. 
Can you fake that fire is hot and you go and put your hands inside fire, into fire, and maybe into a boiling pot? Can you fake that? Can you pretend that you don't know? You can never fake it. Even a madman knows that fire is hot. So likewise, is faith. You can never fake faith. You understand? So you must fully believe. And the only way you can believe is by understanding. You hear what Jesus did for you and you understand it well. And then you believe. If you do not understand, you can never be converted. Remember the Bible says that they, for them to hear and understand with their hearts so that they can be converted. So you must uh, trust the Lord Jesus fully. Like the Bible says, uh, in the book of Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You see, the gospel is basically the power of God. And the gospel is the good news about what Jesus did for us. That is what you need to hear first. And then you believe. And this sacrifice this thing that Jesus did for you is where you place your trust in. You don't place your trust in uh, your own confidence, your own feelings, your own things that you do. Maybe I give to the poor. Maybe I do good things. Maybe I go to church every Sunday. Those are not things which give you salvation. This is why when somebody doesn't go to church for two consecutive Sundays, he thinks, oh, I'm far from God. No. If you are far from God, you are far from God even when you are going to that church. It doesn't change anything. Remember, the church is you. You are the church. It's not a building. It's not some brick and mortar thing. So you have to understand that it's not about our feelings, the way you feel. So stop feeling but and start trusting. Trusting and you can only trust when you hear the truth and you understand the truth. And then you believe in the truth and you tell the truth, may you be my Lord and my Savior. And who is the truth? Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father but by me. So trust in the truth. Hear the truth. Listen to him and believe in him. And for sure, you'll not have to believe in your own feelings.